you do the face of the bevel, I normally do it in the vise, in the grinding room, and you just want to go with full strokes across that face of that bevel. You don't want to sit there and just go all over and, you know, if you just, if you don't do full strokes, you're going to end up with a, uh, with a bow in the middle, and then it's not going to fit to coat. So, again, it doesn't take much to take that oxide off of the bevel from when we cut it. That's it. One, two, still be in there, and they're just hogging away at it. They go put it together, and it's gone. And we got to rebevel it, start over. I'm going well, to grind the back side last. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to grind back about a half an inch. Well, one reason I do it last is because you'll see there's dross. That's that, what people call slag for cutting. It's actually dross. Stuck to that back of the bevel. Your, tent, your backing strip, when you build it, won't fit tight. So when I clean this bevel off, I'm going to also put a burr on that edge. And then you might not have, you might clean all the dross off on this first, the bevel and this. Now you've got a burr on the back. So when I build them, I take a glove off and I feel to make sure there's no burr on the back side of this before I put it together. Wrap this in. Take off that fur, right back about half an inch in the mill scale. <laughs> Do the same thing with your other plate. Now, I'm going to make sure that these surfaces are really clean. Again, these are used ones. They're spatter on the surface. So I'm going to put the top side of the bevel down when I build it. I'm going to go ahead and clean off any spatter and make sure this is nice and flat. If you guys have done this way, probably they shouldn't have anything on because these are used. So they got spatter on it from the previous first welding on it. Then you're going to take the backing strip and you're going to grind off one side. You're going to take all the mill scale off of one side of it. This is a really long one. They're usually about two inches shorter than this. This was just the end of a piece that we cut. They could be, you know, they could be extra long and it isn't going to hurt anything. But we want at least an inch sticking out. 
before and after the joint. Once that milk tail's gone, just stop. Don't be dragging. Or you'll end up with a wave. Now, this is what we're going to build our, our plates on. It's going to get dirty and covered with spatter. So check it. Clean it off with the grinder. Make sure it's nice and flat and there's nothing on here because that will interfere with your fit up. So I'm going to go ahead and knock off the spatter. Don't, don't come into it at an angle. Then all you're going to do is cause a bunch of waves, a bunch of waves and then be nice and flat, full strokes across there. I'm going to make sure this is clean before I put it down. So we're going to put it down so that the top of the bevel is down. Put that on there. I grab the clamps. You're going to want to clamp it tight and tighter the better. I'm getting all this. I'm trying to sell it to the people that weren't here. <laughs> uh. You're going to use your backing strip to set the quarter inch gap. Yeah. So I'm not worried about how tight this is right now. I want to get it clamped in first. And then I'm going to tighten it up. So I don't want a bunch of slop in it like that because that's going to be too wide. I'm going to just sit here, lightly tap it, feel that it's nice and tight. And I'm going to pop it out of there gently. And then I'm going to put this with the ground side down. And I want to have it centered, doesn't have to be perfect. It's got a feel for it. Now I'll look and check it after I get it started. I'm going to lightly snug that down. Move this over a little bit. And I clamp it, I want to clamp in about two inches in from the end. Don't clamp it out here at the end because we're going to weld it out here at the end. We don't want these clamps anywhere near where we're welding. If you'll end up getting weld on this clamp and you'll ruin it. So you're going to go in about two inches and clamp it. Do that you, one's, do you have to do one side or the other? No, you're going to jump back and forth. Do you do that one, that one, that one? You're not going to take clamp off until it's all done well. Yeah, okay. So, this one isn't tight yet. It's just lightly stuck down. The tighter this is, the better. You want that backing strip as tight to those plates if you can get it. If there's any bit of gap in there, you're going to have a hard time getting good penetration. So, the tighter the better. Then all we're going to do... At least an inch long. It doesn't need to be longer than an inch. Three one-inch welds on each side. One inch out on the ends. One inch in the center. They don't have to be pretty welds. They just got to be in there. I don't look at them. I don't care how ugly they are because all they got to do is hold it while you take a step.
Is that a 70-18 rod you're tacking it with, too? I'm going to tack it with 60-10. 60-10, okay. That's it. That's the uh Tack it first before you weld it, and you're going to alternate back and forth to fight that distortion. You don't want to tack it all on side, even though it's clamped, just in case it wants to move, it can. Like there, there. Both one side and the other. Back. Not even worried about how clean I get it. There's any slag trapped in these little welds, and ain't going to hurt anything. Got a hold it long enough to weld it. Jump to the other side. Get it done, clamp it, build all three at the same time, let them air cool, and bring them to me, and I'll measure them and I'll start the documentation on it. Then when you go to mount it, it's going to be on a guard like this with one of these little adjustable heads. You're going to hang it. I like to run it about chin level. You're going to tack it on there straight up and down. Not at an angle, straight up and down. Once you get it inspected, you get it hung, then you'll come get me and I'll verify the position, and you can start the test. I'm going to tack this up, and I'm going to just show you, I'm not going to weld it yet, I'm just going to show you the angles for your root. Uh, most students will run a weld and come and have you look at it after every pass, but you don't have to. But if you want some guidance on it, I'll be happy to walk you through your first one. Different ways you can hang this. I've got two arms. Otherwise, I'm going to have this straight up here. And I'm going to lower that arm down and I'm going to lean on this pipe. You're going to want to steady yourself. If you have two arms, like I do here, I'll just swing it out this way, 
then I'll be able to steady myself when I run. You can raise and lower this. That's it. Do not flip the part. So you can take it off to clean it, but then you got to have me verify that it's back in the same position. I just leave it up here and clean it. You know, if you have a grinder and a drop cord that'll reach it, do not run your wire wheel on. Do not quench it. Do not quench it. Shut my welder off, would you? So first pass, all you're doing is welding that bottom test, that uh, bottom plate to the back of the truck. So you're simply going to come in here, you're going to bring it up so that that rod is centered an equal amount on the backing strip and the plate. So you're going to bring it up about 30 degrees, 15 to 20 is usually enough. And you're going to run a weld along that bottom. And you want to, you don't want to go too slow. If that weld touches the top plate, you're going to have a hard time getting penetration across on your second rip pass. So you want to go at a pretty good pace. The second one, move my arm in, and I'm going to come in like this, and I'm just going to follow that feathered edge of that bevel where it meets the backing strip. You don't need much of a drag angle. The straighter the better, because you'll get better penetration. Five to ten degree drag angle is enough. Because up here in this position, you can go pretty straight with it because slag can't get ahead of you because gravity is bringing it down. So you can get away with about a five degree drag angle to pull it off. If you give it too much of a drag angle, you're going to push that well back, it's going to hold lap, and you're going to, the more of an angle you give it, the less penetration you'll have. Any questions? Okay, we're going to walk over. I'm going to give you guys all your plates. I might have to cut a few more backing strips. I'm just going to issue you guys your plates, and I want you to build them. If you want to use these tables in your booth to build it, I don't care. We've got enough of these floating around. Uh, make sure it's clean. And if anybody wants to build here, that's fine. But we're not doing anything until we get our test plates filled.